Hi, this is Shadi and today we're discussing the open guard from history, uh, evolution and also, you know, try to see the earliest evidence of open guard. Now, uh, before we start that, we need to establish a definition and also see what does it serve. So, uh, from a self-defense standpoint, I would argue that open guard is the best guard you can use, having your feet open, hooking. Uh, stopping the hips, stopping the arms, and also your legs are the strongest limb in your body. So one kick to the face upright, like an uppercut, can end it all. And also they can be used as a strong barrier. So getting past the legs is something crucial, and they have discovered that a long time ago. Now, when it comes to open guard, what is it? I would argue is that any variation of any guard where you have your legs completely open or spread out that is an open guard so everything like butterfly hook uh, spider hook della riva hook uh, lasso anything is in my opinion under the umbrella of open guard some people would construe it and say that they are a guard of their own but uh, i would say as a concept of open guard they would fall right under the umbrella uh, as a tool in open guard for example uh, in rubber guard you have stuff like meat hook uh, mission control invisible collar all that stuff are tools within the rubber guard and i would argue here you see in front of you all these are uh, tools or variations of open guard and john danaher argues the same in his uh, instructional the go further uh, in the open guard where he talks about dif uh, different variations and where you need to apply them uh, depending on the scenario or situation his favorite happens to be the spider guard so uh, now that we have this uh, definition established you can argue that no there are guards of their own everyone has their opinion but when it comes to definition and what is or play semantics i would say it's a big umbrella term and under it there are all these tools and variations so the earliest evidence of open guard play is here you are seeing uh, in front of you this is the Jiu-Jitsu master Yukio Tani in 1918 at Tibudo Kwai in London. Um, Yukio Tani is a Jiu-Jitsu master learned under the famous Matai Montanabe in Fusen Ryu. Now, Fusen Ryu, for those who don't know, it's not particularly uh, skilled in Neiwaza, but rather Matai Montanabe that developed his concepts such as the eel restraint on in the top game and also the... Uh, uh, the frog and the snake concept that also uh, talks about the uh, uh, top game how you distribute weight so on and so forth but when it comes to guard he was also very skilled in guard he broke uh, people's legs uh, while on off his back and also he uh, choked people out with the cross choke while off his back as well against the Kodokan Jidokas. He's the man that really pushed Judo to cover their Neiwaza and not neglect it through a man by the name of Hajime Isogai. So he had to study the tactics of uh, uh, Tanabe in order to get a good Neiwaza. So uh, I did a video talking about who was the first guard player and I came to the conclusion that it was Isogai but uh, here we see that the open guard was a big game uh, for jiu-jitsu masters like Yukio Tani and also uh, Tanabe so here you see attacks from open guard like the uh, Hizagatame and here the Ashi Garami so uh, or here he's demonstrating a leg lock so um, I would say that it was Tanabe that truly uh, discovered it and discovered the utility of it and tried to uh, create tactics around it. Here you see Yukio Tani also demonstrating uh, like smash passes or jump around like passes. So they understand the value of also not only uh, retaining guard as you saw in the early footage, but also the, the, the importance of passing the legs. So uh, Tanabe is the 18, 1890s developing all these skills to beat Jidokas at Tibutoku Kai. So I would argue that he was the one that came up with uh, open guard play since Fuzen Ryu itself does not have uh, an Iwaza specific curriculum. So this is his student clearly demonstrating the teachings of his master. Uh, he also learned under Yataro Handa at the Jiu-Jitsu school in Osaka where uh, Matei Montanabe was teaching. So if we were to establish a timeline, uh, we would say the open guard play started with uh, Tanabe. Now, 
uh, obviously sitting down uh, on your back having your legs open in front of you ready to kick is not uh, an invention uh, made by jujitsu obviously this is very instinctive but the idea where to uh, start to use it as a play it came from here so you see here uh, this is from the game of jujitsu in 1906 i will link it as pdf in the description below it says the man thrown must spin round into this position meaning uh, when you are thrown and on the ground you must immediately assume this position to protect yourself so here is another uh, detailing more of open guard how to pin the hips and also break the posture by pulling the uh, the collar basically from the same book 1906 and here uh, the bottom position which is the closed guard says that uh, when they are trying to pass you just simply pull them towards you and close the guard uh, he calls it position three so meaning this is a different position the closed guard and the open guard so they were aware of these things back then here, this is Sadakazu Uyenishi, another jujitsu master, uh, demonstrating a straight attack from open guard, which is the uh, cross choke. Uh, now, obviously, open guard is, isn't just uh, where you open your legs, you keep your knees tight, as you saw in the photos, uh, some of the basics of open guard, but rather, uh, there are many variations that later came along. Here you see, this is a... Uh, Ju uh, Kosen Judo match from the 1960s you see the uh, judoka demonstrating all sorts of variations like lasso de la hiva uh, and spider hooks and also uh, butterfly hooks all of these which uh, I covered uh, in my uh, names and of judo guards and sweeps in Japanese so uh, open guard as can be referred to as choza or ashi garami so it depends on which variation you are doing uh, so it evolved just from being having open legs which is very instinctive uh, for example the De La Hiva the, I don't see any evidence of anyone using it before Oda so uh, Oda most likely came up with De La Hiva since he really crafted everything on the ground later on uh, around the 1910s and onwards uh, in Japan uh, way after Yukiotani left so uh, Yukiotani here you see him in 1918 demonstrating very basic open guard with some uh, butterfly hooks and spider hooks but here you see it's a very well rounded play of open guard you see by the judoka in front of you so I would argue that the Hiva was invented by uh, Tsunetane Oda there's no evidence ever of someone doing it before him uh, I'll even show a video of him doing it in his uh, footage it's a brief four second sweep of him doing the De La Hiva sweep into or balloon sweep so but rather uh, uh, nonetheless you can still see his uh, De La Hiva hook so throughout the century after the 1910s you had uh, lasso being crafted far more you had uh, other stuff that were being employed here you see the De La Hiva sweep by uh, Tsunetane Oda so you have other things starting uh, to get employed like the Berimbolo uh, many forms of sweeps uh, from Lasso from uh, De La Hiva so on and so forth but I would say the epitome of evolution of uh, open guard I would say it's with Keenan Cornelius Keenan Cornelius is uh, a wizard when it comes to uh, guard play now he came up with what is called the lapel guard with all its variations like worm squid reverse the la worm guard um, with all sorts of sweeps and submissions from it so uh, some may argue that it's a guard of its own but uh, if you happen to own a copy of the uh, lapel encyclopedia uh, you would say you would see that the first two or three chapters of Keenan's uh, lapel encyclopedia uh, are all geared towards the open guard uh, as basics and foundations in order for you to proceed into lapel so if you want to consider it a form of open guard which I do that's fine and if you want to say it's a guard of its own that's also fine but the foundations are clearly within open guard here you see his legs are constantly open and keeping Rushesha and many other champions at bay so if you were to establish a timeline you had from the uh, late 1890s you had the uh, conception of open guard play for after being thrown as a defensive mechanism turned into uh, an offensive uh, position that's one thing that Tanabe did and later uh, 
took on into judo for example yukiotani in 1920 he met up with uh jigoro kano himself and jigoro kano immediately awarded him fourth dan so he later became a judoka because a lot of these techniques that he performed uh, are also found uh, within the judo uh, repertoire of techniques and back then the judokas were becoming very popular so techniques were being interchanged and also using the basics like hip tosses, arm bars, etc. But when it came to the ground, Tanabe has a big role to play. And later on came Hajime Isogai. And Hajime Isogai, after that, came Tan uh, Tsunetane Oda, which uh, came up with all sorts of sweeps and variations of open guard like De La Hiva. And then putting the open guard on steroids, basically, with the lapel or the squid guard or the worm guard with Keenan Cornelius. So. This is the origins and evolution of open guard in my uh, analysis or from the evidence that I've seen. Uh, I will link both uh, Sadakazu Uyenishi's book, the uh, textbook of Jiu Jitsu and also uh, the game of Jiu Jitsu of Yukiotani uh, in the description below as PDFs so you can download them for free. If you have anything else to add, let me know down below and also consider supporting me on Patreon. The link will be in the description. Uh, this was Shadi and thank you for listening.